Dar, and today we'll be discussing ROS cell signaling pathway, the PI3AKT pathway, and cytokine receptors. So the receptor tyrosine kinase, once a signal molecule binds to it, there's, you're going to get your cross-phosphorylation, and then that's going to lead to grabbing an adapter. All right, we talked about that in the cell signaling lecture. So just to review, the receptor tyrosine kinase activates, cross-phosphorylates, each one phosphorylates the other, and that recruits an adapter protein called GRAB, which grabs an exchange factor. And remember, for the GTP aces, they turn on when they have GTP, and they turn off when they hydrolyze the GTP. So RAS is a protein with intrinsic GTP ace activity. This guanine exchange factor that gets recruited is going to swap GDP for GTP, okay? And that's going to activate RAS, all right? And that leads to the downstream signaling cascade. So to repeat, receptor tyrosine kinase is activated. It recruits a grab protein. It grabs the exchange factor. The exchange factor will swap GDP for GTP, and that's what activates RAS, all right? And as you can see here, along the plasma membrane is where RAS is oriented. And also on the plasma membrane is going to be MAP kinase 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 called RAF. All right, so there's a whole signal cascade where there's a kinase that activates a kinase that activates one final kinase. All right, so the final kinase in this pathway, it goes RAS, RAF, MEC, ERK. ERK is going to phosphorylate proteins and transcription factors that are going to cause changes in gene expression. Some of the genes that are transcribed are transcribed immediately, and they're called the immediate early genes. And the genes in those pathways include the cyclins. All right? So we're not going to go into the cyclins and their functions right now, but understand that the protein, one of the protein products of the RAS pathway are going to be cyclins, and they're important for cell growth. So if you get an increase in RAS signaling, you get increased cyclins, and you get increased growth. All right. So there's another receptor tyrosine kinase pathway. All right. So let's say you get a signal to survive, right? Because remember, cells are always signaling their neighbors to survive. When cells don't get signals to survive from their neighbors, they die. So you get a survival signal. It activates a receptor tyrosine kinase, and that is going to activate PI3 kinase. And that's going to cause PIP2 to become PIP3. I don't really need you to memorize any of that. What I want you to know is that this cross-phosphorylation cross eventually leads to the recruitment of AKT to the, me to the membrane. So AKT hangs out in the cytosol. They'll come over here. They'll be phosphorylated by mTOR and PDK1. But most importantly, I want to emphasize AKT in this interaction. All right, so the receptor tyrosine kinase will activate PI3, and then PI3 will eventually, the end result is that AKT is recruited, phosphorylated, and then it goes back into the cytoplasm to do its function. Okay, so it's in the cytoplasm, it binds to the cell membrane side when it gets phosphorylated, and then it comes back. All right, receptor tyrosine kinase activates PI3K, PI3K phosphorylates this, and this will bring AKT over here. AKT gets phosphorylated, and then it leaves. And when it leaves, it comes to this complex. So BAD has its name because without BAD, you get inhibition of apoptosis. All right? So BAD inhibit is part of what allows apoptosis. That's what allows cell death. All right, so this over here is an apoptosis inhibitory protein, and it's going to inhibit apoptosis. It can't do that when BAD is around. Why? Because BAD sequesters it. All right, BAD sequesters this protein. So what AKT does is that it phosphorylates BAD, so that BAD comes off of this apoptosis inhibitory protein. So in the absence of survival signal, so let's work through the pathway, all right? Let's erase everything. 
in the absence of a survival signal, you do not get receptor tyrosine kinase activation. Because you don't have receptor tyrosine kinase activation, you don't have PI3 kinase activation. Because you don't have PI3 kinase activation, you do not have AKT phosphorylation. Because you don't have AKT phosphorylation, you don't have phosphorylation of BAD. Because you don't have a phos phosphorylation of BAD, you do not have inhibition of apoptosis. Because you do not have in inhibition of apoptosis, what do you get? Apoptosis. Okay, this is a pretty important mechanism to understand. The receptor tyrosine kinases lead to AKT phosphorylation, and the and AKT will phosphorylate BAD to prevent apoptosis. So we're going to talk about Jack stat signaling before we wrap up. Notice that usually this polypeptide chain and this polypeptide chain are minding their own business, okay? And you have these Janus kinases that are attached to each independent chain. When a cytokine binds, and this could be prolactin, this could be growth hormone, this could be colon, a colony stimulating factor for myeloid cells um, of the immune system, this can be erythropoietin, um, this could be thrombopoietin. So the point is there's a lot of things that can bind to the JAK-STAT receptor, all right? And each cell is going to have its own type, et cetera, et cetera. All right, interferon alpha, interferon gamma, they also bind here for inflammation. So like you can target this pathway to treat inflammation. You can, some tumors can upregulate this pathway, especially the tumors that produce red blood cell and excessive red blood cells and excessive platelets, those, uh, my, those dysplasias. They very commonly upregulate their JAK-STAT signaling, JAK-STAT2 signaling, and those can be targeted. And you, you will be tested on that. That JAK-STAT signaling in red blood cell and platelet tumors is upregulated, and you can target that um, when you're trying to treat the cancer. And that JAK-STAT is involved in inflammation, and then you can target that. Um, you can try to use JAK-STAT inhibitors to treat certain uh, types of inflammation. All right, so going back to the receptor itself, the jacks are going to be when the cytokine binds or whatever the signal is is going to bind the jacks are brought close together and they're going to phosphorylate each other he phosphorylates him and he phosphorylates him all right and then each one independently phosphorylates its own polypeptide okay polypeptides are brought close together these guys cross phosphorylate and then they phosphorylate their own polypeptide phosphorylation of that polypeptide brings stat okay so once this phosphorylates this, SH2 is going to come and it's going to bring STAT with it. Don't worry about SH2, just focus on STAT. All right. Once STAT is brought close, again, on its same side, this Janus kinase or JAK will phosphorylate STAT. And this JAK will phosphorylate STAT. And then these will all come together to form a transcription factor. All right. That will lead to gene transcription for whatever the downstream effect is, whether it's inflammatory, growth, etc. So just to to repeat, to summarize. This one is independent, this one is independent. A signal comes, and these two will cross phosphorylate each other because they're brought close together. They will phosphorylate the polypeptide on its own side. Then that'll recruit STAT. Again, on its own side, the Janus kinase will phosphorylate STAT. Janus kinase will phosphorylate STAT. All right, and then this will come off to form this, and this will move into the nucleus where it will act to transcribe to act as a transcription factor to lead to the transcription of our target genes and produce the proteins we need. Now I want you to imagine what would happen, so this is a little academic exercise, what would happen if this was turned on even when there was no cytokine signal? So what if there was a gain of function mutation, gain of function mutation in the JAK-STAT pathway such that it does not need a signal to be switched on. Remember how, how we talked about erythropoietin is involved here and a lot and some of the platelets can be produced here. I talk about cancers that overexpress JAK-STAT. This is the one of the ways they do it. You get a gain of function mutation in the JAK-STAT pathway so that it works even without a signal. All right. And then that can lead to tumors. All right. So hopefully this wasn't too much. Um, there's a lot of important topics in here, especially as we get closer to discussing cancer. Um, the reason, the big reason for this series of lectures is to prepare you for um, the neoplasia 
um, because it is such a huge topic on test day. It's important to understand the fundamental mechanisms that drive cancer.